Let's look at some water bottle filters and accessories to see which ones work the best. And spoiler from the one metric I tested, they don't seem to do that much and one filter actually made it worse. But I'll also explain why that doesn't tell the whole story and why you shouldn't freak out about these results. The filters I'm testing are LifeStraw, Brita's insulated bottle with the built-in straw filter and Grail, which you use like a French press instead of sucking through a straw. And because the overall goal is to have the cleanest water, I was also curious to look at the source of what you're filling your bottles with. So I'm also testing our tap water, our under the counter reverse osmosis system by Apex water, and this on the counter pitcher by zero water. My tests are going to focus on TDS or total dissolved solids, and I'm going to use this TDS probe that came with the pitcher. I'll also review what TDS actually is and what this really tells us and equally importantly, what it doesn't. So be sure to stick around for that. Now, before this footage, I used each filter a few few times to prime them before taking samples in case using a brand new filter might affect the results. Then I filled up the bottles and the pitcher with tap water and I collected the filtered water by pouring it into a set of clean glasses so water from each filter stayed separated. The reverse osmosis, grail, and zero water samples were easy enough to get. The Brita bottle was trickier but I was able to pull the water through it using the syringe which coincidentally has a perfect size end to fit in the flexible silicone mouthpiece on the bottle. But the life straw was more difficult and I couldn't get the syringe trick to work because it takes a lot more suction to get the water flowing and it doesn't have a silicone mouthpiece. So what I ended up doing was sucking up the water then quickly covering the mouthpiece with my finger then tilting the life straw over for some of the filtered water to pour out. This should have limited any effect that I had on the results but keep in mind that the life straw results may realistically have been better than what I'm about to show you because of how I did the sampling method. I'll figure out a better way to do this later if this video does well and I make a follow-up. So, you know, subscribe and like and all that good stuff. Using the TDS probe that I got from the pitcher, the tap water showed 71 parts per million, and I'll explain more about that number in a minute and what that actually means. But the main point is that lower numbers have less dissolved solids, so I'm expecting the filtered water to be lower than 71. The reverse osmosis water definitely passed the test by showing an almost complete reduction. Zero water's pitcher was also very respectable, but the interesting part was when I got to the water bottles and the bottle accessories. LifeStraw and Brita had negligible impacts on TDS and Grail actually saw the TDS increase. I repeated the test a total of three times in case my tap water fluctuated and each test showed similar results. RO is amazing, zero water is very good, Brita and LifeStraw were negligible, and Grail actually increased the TDS. Now, before we freak out, let's look at what TDS TDS actually is. The World Health Organization defines it as inorganic salts, along with small amounts of organic matter that are dissolved in the water. When water is saltier, it's more conductive, meaning electricity can flow through it easier. That's why you see these two little prongs at the end of the probe. These calculate the TDS levels by measuring how easily electricity passes through the fluid between these two terminals. So the sensor spits out a single number in parts per million, but that certainly doesn't tell the whole story. It's just a nebulous number without any detailed breakdown of what's actually in the water. And just because there are some dissolved solids and salts in your water is not necessarily a bad thing. You find salts like calcium, sodium, and bicarbonates all the time in foods and medicines. Just know that the EPA says that TDS levels between 200 and 300 milligrams per liter are normal for most public drinking water systems. And it's only when TDS reaches over 500 milligrams per liter when it's not recommended for human consumption. Consumption. And converting milligrams per liter to parts per million, like what my sensor reads out, is not the same for all types of liquids and materials, but for drinking water, it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio. So my tap water results are well within the EPA's guidelines, and so are all the other results from this test. Now we've talked about what TDS is, but it's also good to know what it isn't. It does not include things like PFAS, microplastics, bacteria, or viruses, because those do not affect the conductivity of water. These filter manufacturers say that they separate out a lot of these other types of impurities and my TDS test doesn't confirm or deny that, so don't take these results as proof of anything beyond TDS measurements. Let me put it this way. If I'm camping and I need to drink from a questionable water source, I'm going to feel a lot better about drinking water that's been filtered through a grail bottle even if it increases the TDS because it still could filter out a lot of other harmful things like bacteria in the water. And if this video does well, 
well, then I'm going to look into more contaminants, filters, and testing methods to get a better picture of how each of these filters actually work. So let me know in the comments what you think and if you'd like to see more videos like this. Links are in the description and thanks if you buy using one of those because it doesn't cost you a thing and it helps us earn a small commission. Thanks for watching and happy hydrating.